Hello, uh, my name is Yuri Kavelenov. I'm uh, the founder and the CEO of uh, Soft Aid Soft Company. Uh, this is a newly created company, um, but maybe you heard about Bank Web, which is uh, I'm creator of. So today I will be speaking about uh, what we achieved, uh, what happened, and what our plans for the future. So uh, we are working in the field of 3D web already uh, more than eight years. We created Blank for Web and made it successful. It was open source solution which used and uh, which was used by high profile customers and was quite uh, popular. Uh, so 3D web, what do I mean by this? 3D web is basically an extension for the web. Uh, cinema and uh, video games already um, <coughs> experienced this. Uh, 3D dimension was added to these fields and now it is time for websites to become 3D. So uh, in order to check out what is what it looks like, you can check uh, this hashtag 3D web and uh, see examples of what is possible in this field. Uh, basically, everything what was uh, do was was done uh, can be divided into three main categories, and one is e-commerce. So basically, if you are selling something, you have to. Uh, present it uh, in the, its best, so uh, explain how it looks, how it works, and so on. Uh, PR and marketing, and of course, you are presenting your projects, your companies, your whatever, and e-learning. Uh, already existing uh, simulators and uh, different uh, training materials can be used remotely via internet and this is very important. Of course there are uh, some other uh, fields where 3D web can be used. Uh, why uh, 3D web is so important and uh, what makes it so important is interactivity. So you no longer uh, view still renders or images or videos, you interact with them. So uh, it because of, and because of that, uh, you can uh, put much more information in your visuals. So you can rotate, you can zoom, you can hide something, you can show something, you can animate things, and so on, fly over. And this is also more engaging. So uh, this is because uh, virtual reality and a augmented reality made, was so popular because uh, a viewer is a participant, actually. It's like a gaming experience. And finally, what is very important is that in modern business you can uh, create goods and products specifically for individual customer. And this is important. So a customer himself or herself can create something unique and uh, create own car, jewelry, shoes, whatever. And it will be produced, manufactured and created. Technically, all this is uh, based on WebGL. WebGL is uh, basically a technology available in all browsers, including mobile browsers. So you don't need to think about where to get WebGL, how to install it. It's already available everywhere. Uh, the problem is that uh, it is available for coders only. You need uh, skills similar to Blender developers in order to do something with WebGL. For this reason, you need an engine. Uh, both uh, popular engines such as Unreal Engine Unity support WebGL, but they are too heavy. They are a lot uh, too slow and they even don't work on mobile devices, so you need a specialized WebGL engine. 
for this reason, Blend4 Web was created, and Blend4 Web is basically a Blender-based WebGL engine. So everything done is Blender, then export it and show it in the browser. I started uh, this project with, together with my brother Alexander uh, several years ago. Uh, but today there are some uh, several high-profile customers, uh, such as listed here, uh, who are using Blend4 Web. We already hosted two international conferences, uh, and uh, I'm very happy um, and I'm very grateful for those people who write and uh, spoke about the achievement, what they achieved with Blend4 Web. This is very good. Uh, why made uh, Blend4 Web so popular? What made it? Uh, and uh, one thing is Blender integration, of course. Uh, Blender artists could use Blend4 Web without programmer, and uh, no coding skills are really required to create interactive applications. Because of this, they could create something a very impressive, impressive graphics, not possible with other engines. Uh, it was open source, lightweight, and work it on mobile devices. So this is the reason why Unity was not as good. However, there were problems. Uh, and one of the problems that uh, we focused it on gaming features, but these gaming features were never used in our experience. Uh, there were no PBR shaders. Uh, it was not possible to procedurally generate something. For example, if you have a bookshelf, you cannot uh, change the, the length, the height, the length of shelves, and uh, how many shelves are present. So it's almost impossible to do. Uh, proprietary format was using, and uh, the solution was quite expensive. Uh, still, Everything worked, and uh, we were quite happy, and we were optimistic. But until uh, we go, both got fired. <laughs> well, well, this was a moment from all awkward moments of my life. Uh, it was the most awkward. So. Uh, Basically, everything what we were doing during these years was taken from us, and uh, we didn't get any salary, and so on and so on. Very insane uh, event. Still, uh, after this event, uh, many customers and uh, our community started to con connect with us, to reach us, and uh, asking what's happening. They were worried. I apologize for uh, any inconveniences that uh, our departure caused to uh, your businesses, but we had no choice. Uh, anyway, we felt that what we are doing was important, and uh, our customers wanted to work with us, and the community wanted to continue uh, such an incredible product. So we got time to think and to conceive a new solution, uh, which can be seen as an upgrade, but it is entirely new solution based on new ideas. So what these ideas are? And uh, the first is that if nobody uses Blend4 Web for games, why do gaming features at all? The second is let's use standard format instead of a proprietary. Let's use familiar API instead of inventing our own API for programmers. Let's make it affordable. Let's add PBR shaders and to prevent uh, to, to, to protect our new project from crazy people, we have to own the company by ourselves. So, so Verge 3D was born. Uh, this is 
uh, basically a solution with Blender integration. Uh, it uses GLTF format for storing and exporting data. GLTF is uh, a standard uh, provided by Kronos uh, for real-time uh, graphics transmission over the web and between different packages. So potentially, not only Blender can be supported, but also other 3D editors. The engine will be compatible with FreeGS and FreeGS is a very popular uh, library for creating WebGL applications. Uh, it will use node-based editor of Blender to create uh, materials. It will include PBR pipeline and the logic editor will be available, but this time it will be decoupled from blend files, so you don't need to export every time you want to check how your logic works. So just, and uh, the company is named Soft Aid Soft, and this is our company, company um, owned by developers themselves. So, the workflow, uh, so the engine is already uh, closing it, uh, its release, and uh, what you think here on the right is a screenshot from this engine. Uh, this is an application uh, as a simple configurator of jewelry, uh, which can be deployed on a website, so it works uh, online, it's like an online store or something, and uh, how it can be done. So it's it can be done very easily and similarly uh, to our previous experience. So work workflow looks like you install Verge 3D, uh, you create a new application from a template, uh, you create 3D content as usual using Blender. You can preview at any stage what you are doing, but it's actually don't need to do it often because everything can be seen right in Blender viewport. Then you export your scene into GLTF format. Optionally, you can add scenarios with Logic Editor and deploy it on a website. So not any of this stage requires from you any coding skills. So you can do it by clicking buttons, and uh, this is very good for artists, I think. Uh, here you see uh, a material uh, for this uh, rose gold uh, ring. This is a quite simple material, but you can create materials of any complexity, uh, adding more nodes, every of which will be exported and uh, properly displayed in the browser. Here, we uh, used uh, a logic editor from uh, created by Google. They uh, initially created them uh, this logic editor for uh, teaching children how to program, but I think it will be feasible for Blender artists as well. So uh, basically, you see here on the left, there are some logic blocks. Uh, you can drag them into this area in the middle and uh, place them here. So the red one uh, on this, uh, you can read on object click, is basically an event listener. So you just want uh, the user to click somewhere, for example, on this ring, or on a button, which is located somewhere here in the UI. And then the user clicks, something will happen, and what has happened you can uh, describe by using more blocks, which are put inside this red block. So uh, basically, you can create uh, scenarios of any complexity uh, by combining these blocks, by selecting uh, objects and materials and animations from drop-down menus, and so on and so on. Then you simply click Save, and everything will be saved, converted to 
uh, JavaScript internal, internally and play it out in your application. So once again, no programming skill is required. And here is a preview of uh, Roughness uh, metallic model of our PBR shader, uh, which is already available. And uh, this is uh, basically a screenshot. Uh, we are waiting for Blender 2.8 in order to make it possible, make it visible in the viewport. But right now you can use it for creating PBR shaders. And uh, we expect to make a beta release in November, so I encourage you to sign up on our website uh, so that you can uh, get the access to this release. And in December, we are planning for a stable release. So in order to uh, follow up, you, you can subscribe to our Twitter and Facebook in order to uh, get the latest news and updates. Uh, so uh, what about customers? Our customers, valuable customers who use Blend for Web, we invite you to try this new solution because the migration process is very straightforward because it is based on Blender as well. Uh, if you already obtained a Blend for Web license, we can provide you a discount so that uh, you don't spend much money. Uh, if you like to create a partnership with us, we encourage you to contact us as well. So here is one of our past customers, Anemographs from the USA. Um, if you may, you may be already familiar with their words, so these are amazing interactive applications. They are creating them using Blend for Web for very high-profile customers. They are just uh, themselves are art. You can probably check them out using animagraphs.com. Uh, where these applications are deployed. Very, very interesting. I encourage you to do this. But the thing is that this is a screenshot from uh, one of the applications which is, was already ported over Verse 3D. So it is already possible to use Verse 3D to create such level of graphics, such level of applications with animation, with uh, materials, with uh, whatever. So uh, I'd like to thank, of course, you for your attention. But I also I'd like to thank uh, the Blender community uh, for their support during all these years. And I, I also like for, to thank uh, everybody who supported us during these hard times, because your support helped us to uh, rise again and to continue our work. Thank you.